So this right here is the latest iMac 2021, which in one of my previous videos I reviewed and I told you guys I'd be getting it. It's been a while, it's been three months since I've had this thing and uh, I apologize for not doing an unboxing video. Things were really hectic in my life. So I was struggling to get content out, but I thought it would be actually even more valuable to do a video three months later to kind of report on how this thing has done, how good this thing is, and how helpful it's been for my workflow. So let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna be telling you guys why this computer works for me. And maybe then you'll be able to figure out whether it's gonna work for you. Uh, I'm not making any objective claims here about whether the Windows is better or Mac is better. I kind of did that in my last video and there was a lot of, uh, let's just say, uh, debate. So I've learned my lesson. I'm just gonna be telling you why this is good for me specifically. Now, first things first, software. Everybody wants to know which software is gonna work and which software is not compatible. It's just Revit, uh, 3DS Max, and MicroStation, which to be honest, are all pieces of software that are not that commonly used in university. Revit is something that is usually used in practice because it's very efficient BIM software, building integrated management software, and therefore you're not gonna be using that in university. MicroStation is sometimes used in university by students. It's quite a flexible, quite an old piece of software that is quite useful. But nowadays, most people are just using AutoCAD or Vectorworks. And 3ds Max, 3ds Max is a very specialized piece of software for 3D visualization and rendering and motion graphics. And so it, again, is a very nuanced piece of software that not a lot of architecture students can use and not a lot of architecture students will need to use because they have alternatives that are a lot simpler to use, for example, V-Ray for, for Rhino, also V-Ray for SketchUp. So in my opinion, sacrificing those three pieces of software to get this incredible machine is not really a problem. But for those people who do really need to use Windows, but also really, really want to get an iMac because of its efficiency, because of its interconnectivity with your other Apple devices and all sorts of other positive reasons that I will tell you about in a second, you can get Parallels, which is a piece of software that you can download onto your Mac, which will essentially allow you to split your hard drive into two which is called partitioning, and then use half of your kind of computational power and your computational space as a Windows computer, and half of it to be used as your original Mac computer. It's an amazing piece of software, which is available straight on their website. So you just go to parallels.com, you'll be able to download it straight to your computer. You can also do a free trial. If you're a student, it's a really good deal. They make you pay £70, I believe, for your term time, which will be however long your education is. But if you're not a student, it can be up to £80 a year, which is, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. So yeah, if you really need Windows, get yourself Parallels, and you can basically use two computers, one Windows, one Mac in your iMac. And also some new piece of information, Parallels can now run on M1 chips, which basically means it can run on this because this is the iMac 2021, which uses an M1 chip. The new MacBook Pro laptops that have been released, they will also be able to use Parallels now, which is something I kind of predicted, but it was inevitable to be honest. Now, I don't use this computer for any architecture related things because I work a full time job and I have my PC at work, which I use. However, saying that, 
I do work from home sometimes. So what I do is I go onto a remote desktop, Microsoft remote desktop, and that's accessed through creating a VPN proxy through Cisco AnyConnect. And so what that allows me to do is to access my computer at work from home. And the reason I'm telling you this is because this solves the whole compatibility issue for me personally. Like if I need to use Revit, which we use a lot at work, I just do it on my iMac through this remote desktop. But at the same time, if I did want to use all the main pieces of software that I think all students will probably want to use, for example, Rhino, AutoCAD, all the Adobe suites of Photoshop, Illustrator, you know, even if you're editing videos of Premiere Pro, which I do a lot of because of this, obviously, YouTube, this iMac will do the job really well. It's so fast. Sometimes I have my remote desktop open as well as some pretty high demanding pieces of software running all at the same time. And this thing deals with it lightning fast. So that's the reason I got this. I actually upgraded this iMac to a 16 gig RAM, which is double the amount the stock machine comes with, which you can do through the Apple store when you order an iMac. So that basically means my iMac is slightly faster than the stock iMac. It also came with 250 gigabyte storage, which to be honest is pretty low, but at the same time, I have only used about 158 gigs in the three months that I have it. And a lot of that I know I can get rid of because at the same time, I've got 50 gig iCloud storage at like 79 pence a month. So storage nowadays is not a problem with clouds everywhere with external hard drives. So for me, the priority was speed. And so I upgraded that. By the way, this thing, as I said in my previous video, is a 1080p inbuilt HD camera. So I am the most high def guy in my Zoom and Teams meetings which obviously we're all doing so much of nowadays. And the microphone quality is also incredible. So this thing is just a brilliant home hub. My setup essentially has a lamp behind it. And all I do is turn this on during meetings. And so this is a really cool hub for me to take my video calls and meetings. The most important kit I have for this PC for this iMac is this USB adapter over here, which is without doubt the most crucial piece of kit and kind of highlights one of the biggest issues with the iMac, which is the number of ports and the types of ports it has inbuilt. And it is really, really crap, I'm gonna be honest. You only get like two or three lightning ports. Ideally, if they had USB-C types attached into it, that would have been amazing. But with this USB adapter, which I'm sure a lot of people use, is essentially as good as it can get for me. And the one I've got has a HDMI connection. It has three USB connections. It actually even has an SD card insertion point. And so this thing is crucial for me. In one go, I'm able to connect my external hard drive, an external lighting source, a mouse connection, and a HDMI connection for a separate monitor, which sits next to my Mac. And at the same time, I can also put in a micro SD card for the camera footage and editing purposes. And hopefully you found that video useful. If that video was helpful anyway, make sure you leave a like and and please make sure you're subscribed. It just helps me make more videos for you guys. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment. Go check out the rest of my videos for all architecture related content to do with drawing guidance, to do with really interesting interviews because I have a whole podcast series videoed and available on audio or major streaming platforms. Just have a browse of my channel. Look at the links in the description. I guess I'll see you guys on the next video.